All right, as an advanced athlete, you should know the bar weights in your gym. Every gym is different. When it comes to dumbbells, they're all pretty well the same. They're all labeled at 15, 17 and a half, 20, 25 pounds. You can pretty well depend on that, although there's varying weights. Sometimes I've found them one or two pounds out, depending if they're iron or if they're rubber, but that's splitting hairs, it doesn't matter. But when it comes to your bar weights, you really should know the bar weights in your gym. When we do the uh, Warrior Wim program, I'm talking about adding weights onto the bar, so I don't have the entire bar and weights added in there, because everybody's bar weights are different. So that's where you have to come to know your bar weights. So for example, in my gym, I have weighed all of these, and it's really easy for you guys to do too. Weigh yourself, step on the scale, and then step on the scale with the bar. Or if you don't want to take your body weight, <laughs> then put the bar on. Um, but it really is important that you come to know because even a difference in two or three pounds can really um, create a difference in your results or lack of results, right? Because you may be thinking you're at a certain weight and you're not. And so we're always trying to progress. But the mature female athletes comes to know her bar weights in her gym. So this one is an easy curl bar. So this one is 16 pounds. Now again, they're different. Some of them are 25 pounds. So you guys are gonna have to weigh them yourselves. So this is an easy curl. We do all sorts of different moves with this. We can do biceps, triceps, we can do upright rows. Uh, sometimes this grip is required or it's better for the wrists and it's also better to target specific muscle groups. So we often call on the easy curl bar in specific exercises but know your easy car, uh, bar weight so this is generally the lightest then we can go to various short bars and so the next up for me is 24 pounds and this is a short straight bar as we call it it's shorter now in a lot of gyms the short straight bar is traditionally 35 pounds because a lot of the gyms use Olympic bars and that's a big difference if it's a good gym they will use Olympic bars which are anywhere usually ranging from 25 to 35 to 45 um, in my gym I tone it down because I have um, older female athletes in here my bars are lighter in weight so I have 16 24 and 42. So this is my 24 pounder. And so this one is shorter. It also helps with women just learning because balance and um, coordination is important. And sometimes too long a bar is too long a bar and they're trying to balance and manage it too much and it makes them nervous. So the shorter bar fits, but these, wear, these shorter bars are anywhere weighted from 24 to 35 pounds. So again, find the weight of your short bar. The next bar up is probably the Olympic bar or the long bar. And this is the granddaddy. This is the Olympic standard. Now most gyms have the Olympic standard which is 45 pounds. Um, this one's longer. This is uh, usually used in the bench press and the squat and deadlift. The three main power moves because you need a longer bar. You need a heavier bar. You need a sturdy bar. So the Olympic bars are built to manage the heavy, heavy weights. The other deal with the Olympic bars is you know them because this portion twirls. And the reason it twirls, again, in Olympic moves, you need the weights to be able to twirl in order to do the lift. So this is traditional. This has been around a long, long time. Now mine twirls, <laughs> but it's not considered the traditional Olympic because it's only 42 pounds. Um, does it make a difference? You bet it does. If I went to a, another gym and grabbed their Olympic bar and did my overhead presses with 45 versus 42, I'd really feel it. You just need to know where you're at, right? So this is the 45 pounder. So this one's really super long, really um, secure and stable for the big moves like the deadlift, right? Like the squat where it's behind your head and you're squatting and then with the bench press where you're laying and you're pressing it. So this is used in the big traditional lifts. Again, weigh your bars and know what you're lifting because when it comes to adding on weight, five pounds aside, 10 pounds aside, those are great 
and you can come to know how much you add on each side. That's why I don't ever say do a bench press with 60 pounds because then you got to manage it, do all the math in your head. Let's just say add five pounds a side, then add seven and a half a side. That's how we build strength. The other uh, variable is leg press. It's a huge variance from gym to gym. There are some gyms where you could do a one-legged press without any weight and it's so heavy and other gyms you have to add on a 45 so the mechanism is different for everybody you're not going to know the weight of the mechanism on, on a leg press everybody asks that there's no way to know you come to know your equipment and what your lifts are and then you progress from there so this is your recipe your environment it's the same with the smith squat i have been able to measure the weight of mine uh, by putting uh, the scale on a bench and dropping the smith down and mine's 32 pounds most smiths are anywhere from 40 to 45 pounds it's hard to know but again we don't care about those those bar weights so much we just want to add the weights on and maintain consistency in watching those numbers grow but when it comes to your bars you should really know what you're lifting because if you're lifting a 45 or you're lifting a 30 it's a huge huge difference and a lot of trainers won't know they'll just call them all Olympic bars but they won't know the variance and I wouldn't rely on them to tell you the weights either because very few of them know or they look in magazines and they go oh yeah it's the same length it must be 35 pounds not necessarily so hop on the scale know your bar weights all right cheers <laughs>